Right, so next we're going to be looking at a new chapter and the chapter we're going to be looking at is chapter 7, Work and Energy. In this chapter we're going to start with the definition of uh, the work done by external force. Then we're going to go on to look at something called the scalar product or the dot product. And we'll be rewriting the definition in terms of the dot product. We're going to have a look at how to to derive and define the work done by a varying force. Um, up until now in school, you might have dealt with the work done by a constant force. We're going to move further on to, to look at springs. And related to springs, we're going to have a law known as Hooke's Law. Um, and we're going to further then go on to look at kinetic energy, derive the work energy theorem, and uh, look at the definition of power and then of course solve problems related to these uh, different concepts. Starting first with the definition of work, uh, you'll see we have some situation where uh, we have a block and there's a force being uh, exerted to this uh, on this block, so magnitude F, uh, and this force is causing the, the block to you know, move a distance, and we're defining this distance as a delta R, then there's also some angle involved and this is to say that the force isn't acting in the same uh, direction as the displacement but the force is acting with some angle uh, delta theta well theta relative to to the force and under these conditions the definition of um, of work is given by this expression here the work is defined as the force times the displacement times cos of this uh, angle uh, theta. You'll notice that if we take a look at this expression um, uh, and we think about different conditions under when the work might be zero, well the work might be zero if, if any of these t terms are zero. Firstly if you know the force is zero, if f is zero, so that's to say if no force is applied. The second condition could be delta r if the displacement is zero. This is to say that if, if there is a force acting, but the force doesn't cause the object to move, then we would also have, um, you know, zero work being done. Um, another condition could be that, you know, cos of theta uh, might be zero. And we know cos of theta will be zero when theta, for example, is um, 90 degrees. So under these situations, we would have, have a case where the force is acting orthogonally to, to the displacement. Um, in terms of, of this, this definition, it can be rewritten in terms of uh, dot products as, as shown below. Um, a dot product or scalar product is generally a definition or, or a concept relating to, to two vectors and relates to the way uh, they should be uh, multiplied together. Dot product refers to one of the ways in which uh, two vectors can be multiplied together. And it's also known as the scalar product. The reason for that is um, when you multiply the two vectors together, the answer that we get is, is a scalar. It's, it's a number. And we're going to take a look at, at how the dot product is defined. So as I said, a dot pro product refers to multiplying two, two vectors together. Um, in this figure, you can see I have uh, two vectors, vector x and vector y, and there's some angle uh, between them. In terms of the definition of a dot product, then, a dot product is defined as follows. Um, x dot y, that's how we say it. This is defined as the magnitude of vector of vector x, so the length of vector x, times the, the magnitude of vector y times cos of theta where you know theta is the, the angle between them so this is the way in which uh, a, a dot product is defined if we to you know make this example more concrete uh, we might have for example x uh, might be of length uh, 6 let's say this is 6 let's look at a, an example where theta is say 60 degrees and um, perhaps y may be of length 2. 
then if we to calculate the, the dot products, if we to calculate x dot y, the way we do that then that's the length of x which is 6 uh, multiplied by um, the length of y which is in our example is 2 multiplied by cos of 60. And if you if you use your calculator you can see that you know cos of 60 is equal to a half so this is 6 times 2 times a half and this is equal to 6. So you'll note that in terms of this definition and um, the answer is is a scalar it's just a, a number. So in our definition we've just defined uh, the work uh, as the product of the force times the displacement delta r times cos of the angle between them which is theta. If you look at our, our definition you note that this equation is in a similar form as this equation over here. It has one quantity multiplied by another quantity multiplied by cos of the angle uh, between them. So this means then that we can rewrite our, our definition of work uh, as the dot product of two vectors. It's the, the dot product of force and it's the dot product of the force in the displacement uh, vector. So this basically uh, is an explanation of, of this point over here. Work is equal to the dot product of force times the displacement vector. It's worth us noting that um, the SI units of work is going to be joules. And, um, you know, one joule is equal to one newton meter, which you can clearly see from the, the definition. Previously in school, you maybe have used a simpler definition of work. You may have used just work is equals to F times the force times the displacement without the cos of theta term. And this could have been because in school you were only considering um, very simple cases where the force in the displacement is in the same direction. For these cases, you know, um, the angle would be a zero and cos of zero is one. So if the force is acting in the same direction as the displacement, you're allowed to use um, force times displacement. But in general, um, we'll be solving more complicated terms now at university. So we always need to include the cos of a theta term. This next slide just uh, summarizes what we've been speaking uh, about up until now. It says force and displacement are, are both vectors, but work is a scalar quantity. Remember, um, work is just joules. It doesn't have a direction associated with it. Uh, the definition of work des describes a dot product of vectors. And as we said, in general, um, a dot product is something written uh, in this form. It's the magnitude of the first vector times the magnitude of the second vector times cos of the, the angle between, between the two, two vectors. Um, dot products or scalar products is something that you will be uh, dealing with in, in, in more detail in your, in your maths course if you haven't already done so. But I've just listed some uh, properties of, of dot products here. You can see one of the properties is that it's uh, commutative. So you can swap, um, swap the order. Same way as you multiply numbers, you can swap the order. There's also a distributive, distributive rule which applies. Um, you see here the dot product of r hat dot r hat is equals to, um, remember here we're dealing with unit vectors, r hat is the unit vector for the x direction and unit vectors we said always have magnitude of 1. So if we do r hat dotted with r hat then we have the length of r hat which is 1 multiplied by the length of r hat which is 1. Obviously, um, r hats and r hats, they point in the same direction. So we have cos of, of zero, the angles between them is zero. And then the, the result of that dot product is one. Similarly, if you take um, the, 
the dot product of j hat with itself or k hat with itself, you also get uh, the, the answer to be 1. If you take different um, combinations of, of dot products, then you're always going to find that the, that the answer is 0. For example, if you take i hat and you, 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 you know, dot it with uh, j hat, then you have 1 times 1. The angle between i hat and j hat is 90 degrees, right? And cos of 90 degrees is 0. So for that uh, reason, the, the product is 0. Similarly, for, for each of, of, of these um, um, dot products, you're going to get 0. Property 5 says if you multiply uh, two scale, if you take the dot product of a vector with itself, you get the length of, of the vector um, squared. And, you know, the reason for this is that the, the angle uh, bet uh, between the two vectors when the vector is dotted with itself, the, re the angle that, that, that concerns us is um, 0 degrees and cos of 0 is 1. So you can write out the individual steps and verify that this is the case. Let's take a look then at an example. In the example we're going to be speaking of, it says figure 7.4 shows four situations in which a force is applied to an object. In all four cases, the force has the same magnitude and the displacement of the object is to the right and of the same magnitude. The question that we ask to do then is rank the situation in order of the work done by the force on the object from most positive to most negative. So let's take a look then. Um, you know, in each of the, the four cases, A, B, C, and D, we have a force acting. And they say that the, the magnitude of the force is the same in, in each case. In each case, there's a, a displacement. So this block is is going to be moved and the displacement is going to be the same in in all four cases you can see the blocks going to be displaced by some distance delta r but what differs between the individual cases is we see that the force is acting at different angles for each of the four cases we told that the, um, the force is the same and we also told that the displacement is the same, or well, the magnitude of the force is the same, and the magnitude of the displacement is the same. Um, in each of the four cases, what really is varying is this angle, um, theta. And because we're going to be working with different angles, um, you know, we're going to be interested in what is the value of cos of theta, where theta can be any any different angle relating to each of the four cases so the the work or the the solution for each of these four cases is really going to depend on this cos of theta term for this um, reason i've i've sketched uh, a graph of how how cos theta looks uh, and um, you'll you'll be aware that cos is a function that varies between plus one and minus one and it has this this shape at zero it's you know one at 90 degrees it's um, zero remember on the x-axis we're looking at um, different values of theta and on the y-axis we're looking at the value that that cos of theta um, assumes but getting back to our problem then we asked to to rank the work done for each of these four cases from most positive to most negative. Okay, so let's let's make a list. Uh, uh, let's break down uh, what's happening in each of, of the cases. We have case A, B, C, and D. For case A, we're able to note that you know the angle between the between the the force and the displacement. We have an angle of theta equals to 90 degrees. For um, case B, similarly, uh, we can take a look and see that in this case, the angle between the force and the, the, the displacement is, is 180 degrees. So for B, we have theta equals to 180 degrees. For case C, 
we have the force and the displacement are, are pointing in the same direction. So this means that um, theta will be equals to zero degrees. And in case D, we note that theta at you know, 90 degrees would be situated here. It certainly looks bigger than 90 degrees, but at the same time, it's, it's less than it's less than 180 degrees. So it's somewhere between 90 and 180 degrees. It might be 100, might be 110 and so forth. And the way we can, can write that is theta would be, you know, bigger than 90 degrees, uh, but it would certainly be less than, than 180 degrees. So then if we're interested to know about the work being done, Remember the work being done, it will follow cos of theta. So if we, if we take a look at uh, cos of theta, then we can see that, um, you know, when theta is equals to 90 degrees, cos of theta is zero. So for case A, cos of theta is zero. When theta is equals to 180 degrees, cos of theta is minus one. So for case B, we have cos of theta being minus one. When theta is equals to zero degrees, we have the case where cos of theta is one. When theta is, is bigger than 90, but less than 180, when theta is, you know, bigger than, than, than 90, but less than 180, means we're speaking about this region here of the graph. Um, you know, bigger than 90, less than 180. Here we can see that cos of theta is going to be less than zero or bigger than minus one. So in this final case, we have cos of theta. It must be um, bigger than minus one, uh, but it must be less than less than zero. So, for example, it, it might, you know, take on a value of, of minus a half. Might, it might be minus half, minus a half. Could be anywhere between zero and minus one. But we are asked in the question to rank the work done from most positive to most negative. So looking at the, the numbers that we get, then we can see that the most positive number out of all of these numbers will be uh, one. So the most positive uh, number is one. Uh, the second most pos positive is zero. So um, the second second case would be C would be the second most positive. Um, next we have D. Remember we said, for example, this might take on a value such as minus a half or minus a third. So th the third most positive one would be D. And finally, um, the least positive or the, you know, the most negative would be uh, B. So this then is the solution to, to this uh, problem. This next example is a very simple example, almost trivial example. It speaks about a a man uh, cleaning a floor with a vacuum cleaner. It says the man is exerting a force of 50 newtons and the force is, is acting um, at an angle of, of, of 30 degrees. And it says um, calculate the work done by the force on the vacuum cleaner as the vacuum cleaner is displaced three meters to the right. So they're saying this man's going to be pulling this vacuum cleaner uh, you know, with a displacement, uh, delta R of three meters. So if we ask to, to calculate the work done, then we given the force, we're going to use forces equals to 50 newtons. We given the displacement is three meters, delta R is three meters. And we given the angle, the angle is 30 degrees. So by using those um, three pieces of information, you can apply the definition of work and calculate the, the work done in, in this case. 
I'll leave that as an example for you to, to do yourself. So next we'll look at a slightly more complicated example together. The example speaks about a block of mass 10 kilograms must be lifted up a ramp 5 meters long and 3 meters high. If there is no friction, what is the work done parallel to the incline to move the block up the ramp with constant velocity? So here is shown, I've, I've, I have a, a picture illustrating. Um, they say that the length of the ramp is 5 meters and the ramp is, is 3 meters high. So I've, I've shown those two quantities. The length is 5 meters, the height is 3 meters. And we asked to calculate how much work is done parallel to the incline. So how much work is done in this direction as we move the, the, the block from the, the starting position to the final position. And the, the way we're going to be doing this problem is to be using the dot product between a force and a displacement. And, you know, calculating the work in that way as per the definition. One of the things we need to look out for or be careful for is we need to make sure that we, we choose the directions correctly, we use the correct forces, we use the correct displacement and, and so forth. So as we said uh, before, whenever we have a problem of this kind of an object on a slope, we, what we will do is we will, we will draw our axes uh, choose our axes to be orientated with the slope. So we choose our axis orientation to be as such. And um, as per usual, we have the X and the Y axes. And now what we have is, you know, we have a, a number of different forces acting, acting on the object. So the first force that we're going to have is we're going to have the force of gravity acting uh, downwards. And this force of gravity is going to be Fg equals minus Mg. It's in the, in the negative direction. Of course, remember this, this, this force of gravity, it has two components. It has an x component and it has a y component. So we could, could draw these two, two forces in. The one force is going to be, um, you know, F, Fgx. And the, the, other, the, other, the other component is going to be a force in, in, this, in this direction. This force is going to be the y component of, of gravity. If we, if we, of course, have, have the additional force acting, and this is the normal force, we will have a normal force uh, acting in, in this direction. The problem says that we have, have no, no friction acting, so, so that's fine. Um, in terms of, of what we've been asked to do, we've been asked to calculate the work and According to the work, um, we need to, to use an appropriate force and we need to use an appropriate displacement. You know, we asked about calculating the work parallel to the incline. So we asked about the work along the incline. So for us to calculate work, we need to have firstly an, an angle and we need to have a force and we need to have a displacement. So if we look along the incline, our, our displacement, that's simply going to be 5 meters. Let's speak a little bit about the force. So we told in the problem that, that the, the block moves up the hill with constant uh, velocity, right? So in order to move the, the, the block with constant velocity, it means that we need to, to apply a force of equal magnitude to this Fgx in this direction. So this is to say that for us to, to be moving this um, object up, up the hill, we're going to be applying a force in this direction, F. This is the force that we're going to be applying. And this force is going to be of equal magnitude to the x components of gravity. 
um, are sets of equal 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 magnitude because they say that the the block moves up the hill with constant um, velocity. So in terms of this then we know that if we call this force F our displacement is also going to be in this in this direction. So the formula that we're going to be using is you know work is equal to F the force times the displacement. The displacement is five meters up the hill so it's the force times five meters times cos of the angle between this force and the displacement vector. In this case the force and the displacement vector are both in the same direction so it means that the angle is just going to be zero so we're going to have cos of zero. But now we need to you know calculate what is F, what is the force that we apply. Well as I said before it needs to be the same as the the force of the x component of, of gravity it needs to be the same so it can move up the hill with constant um, speed well we're able to to calculate that uh, because you know fgx would be related to fgx would be related to this the 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 angle of the hill remember that whenever we deal with problems where, um, where we have a slope and we choose the axes in this way then the, 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 the x component it no longer follows cos but now follows sine of uh, theta it would be sine of this theta so if we were able to know what theta is then we would be able to to substitute in here and, and know what this uh, force of, of gravity is. Well, it turns out that we are able to find out what theta is. We're able to find out what theta is by the geometry of this of the situation. Um, if you have a look in this triangle, then you can see that sine of um, theta, sine of theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. So it's going to be 3 meters over 5 meters. So this means that theta is equal to arc sine of 3 over 5. And if you use your calculator, then you'll find out that this is equal to 36.87 degrees. So this means that um, you know theta is is thirty seven point um, eight theta is equal to thirty six point eight seven degrees, and this now allows us to calculate the x components of gravity. So substituting the the relevant values in, remember this this value of f it needs to be the same as is the x component of gravity so it means our work is equal to m g sin theta times times 5 times cos of cos of 0 and um, we're given that um, the the mass is is 10 kgs so it's going to be 10 times um, G's we're going to use 9.8 um, times sine we saw theta is 36.87 this whole thing times 5 times you know cos of 0 is just 1 and if we if we calculate all these um, what this is then this works out to be 294 joules 
that ends the, the solution.